Let's get over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil has an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also, has a great newsletter, the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get the opening call. call. Come over to our website at TFNN. Go into newsletters. You're going to see it on the left-hand side, the second one down. You just hit the opening call. You hit that subscribe button. You get the opening call for one month for $149. Six months for six ninety five, which is a savings of one hundred ninety nine dollars, or twenty two percent, and one full year for eleven ninety five, which is a savings of five hundred ninety three dollars, or thirty three percent. Now they all come, folks, with a thirty day money back guarantee. Basil is a great newsletter. He also has approximately fourteen archives out there, so you understand how he looks at the market every day and how to ride that Chapman wave. Basil Chapman, what's going on? It's uh, not what's going on. It's what's going down. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's a fact. So, it's so interesting, you know. Look, we've got this. Look at this left side chart. This is the Dow daily. The middle yes. is the weekly chart, and the, on the right is the monthly chart. So, because we made that high, all-time high on Friday in leg C, you remember? On I think we we spoke on Thursday because we couldn't do Tuesday, so we did Thursday. Yes. And I mentioned to you. That in the Chapman Wave methodology, we try to identify the lowest low bar, count each successively higher peak. When we get to a leg B or just after leg B, if there's an upgrade from a buy signal to a buy mode of the chart, it doesn't matter whether it's a one-minute chart or a monthly chart, the implication is that it should go to at least four higher peaks, alphabetized sequence A, B is the next, P, C is the next, Leg D and then peak D is the following one. Well, it's very interesting because in the Dow, we got to a leg C with that move on Friday to 41,585. And I said to subscribers, we've got to be careful. We're only expecting one more peak and then other things can happen. Doesn't mean to say it could, but this week coming up, that's the week we're in. I said, I'm anticipating some kind of a pullback. So the selling that occurred this morning, to almost from pre-market, yesterday was kind of almost an unchanged uh, session, but today just started straight away. And we haven't had any let up at all. And what what is really important about this is that the nine period moving average, this green line is still way above the 14. That so far is very bullish. So to get that green to go pink, in other words, to go under the 14 period which, uh, moving average, which would be very negative, you'd have to see a slide to about 40,500 or less. And it has to be very quick. And I don't know what provoked the selling. But the fact that it started just the very first trading day of September, kind of when everyone's back at work, although I'm sure people were at work throughout the summer, but maybe much lighter, tells me that I've got to monitor this very carefully because it seems to me it's a little bit programmed because I still have the technicals here that are good. Like the MACD is good. Relative strength did pull back, but it's still pretty strong. Stochastic's still at 88%. I mean, that's fabulous. I love 88%. When we're long and we are long. So, and the on balance volume was a little bit overbought, and the weekly chart is still very good, and that's in leg C. So, I'm watching this very closely because it's very seldom, especially when you're going to new highs, that the chart will fail at a C and not go to at least a D. <laughs> so, that's where we stand right now. But what's very interesting is, you know, there's a rotation going on. And some of the financials, for instance, our Bank of America, which we are still long, wait, let me, I typed that in the wrong place, let me put it over here, is still holding pretty well. And I think it's really important, he says, the way I see the market, that the financials hold up. Uh, it's not great, but it's holding pretty well. It's only down 15 cents. And in the healthcare, you know, I spoke to you about that healthcare stock that we've got, SOLV. Uh, Solventum Corporation is in the healthcare industry. It's a spin-off from Triple M. I said we were anticipating and we went along that it should go to four higher peaks to a leg D and it should hit the 200 period moving average. It's done all of that and even today it's just it's down 31 cents. If you put that together with say um, United Healthcare, which is also holding very well, it's up uh, $9.74 at 599 almost uh, 600 If you put it together with GE Healthcare, uh, what I'm saying is that there's a rotation going on and how that rotation unfolds over the next week is going to be important. So you can see here's uh, GE holding well. Uh, even 
we've rotated into this telephone. Look, AT and T. I know AT and T goes back with, for you decades. Oh, my bell. That's right. <laughs> your, your mom worked for AT and T. That's right. Uh, uh, and look at this. It's at. You know what's fascinating? Even with that split, you remember it was like 1981 or 82 or three, something like that. They were forced to break up. And yes. then even with the breakup, look, they're still in the run. They're still holding very well. Anyway, today they're up uh, 3%, uh, 2.29%. Right. So it's a rotational market. And if everything was going down, I'd say, oh, we've got a problem. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying there's still residual strength, but I am anticipating that it was going to be this week that I was looking for some kind of a pullback. So even if the Dow had to find enough strength to make a nominal new high, I think we're in this phase in September that's going to be very choppy, very selective. And as I say, some of the positions we have are working out. Some of they probably going to hit stops. But I, I, we had raised cash. We put that cash to work. And now we're going to start raising some cash again. But uh, you know, the way I'm looking at it, I still think there's a chance that the Dow goes to above 41,585. I think it should be this week, but we'll, we've got a shortened week. But we'll see how the way the market is right now. Obviously, this is a really important session. But if yeah, tomorrow gonna, we have. It's going to definitely it, take some work, that's for sure. Yeah. You know, because we, we're down a lot more than Europe and Asia was. We'll see if they follow us, you know, tonight. So, But in a sense, yeah, but we're also down for. I mean, it isn't like interest rates spiral to the upside. It isn't, you know, there, there is an external event here. So I'm just wondering if this isn't just something where people came back to work and said, hey, uh, just let's, let's, get, let's raise some cash. And that's going to be very important. I do see some weakness coming up, but I still see some inner strength based on my technicals, my nine period moving average, even in the S&P, which is also down sharply. Look, SBX done X. There we go. Look, the S&P, sharp move down, but that nine period moving average is above. Now, I've been talking about the QQQ as being weak because the semiconductors are weak. There you can see some different thing altogether. That is, that's the reason why I think the upside now is limited, but we've got this rotation going on. If you can pick the sectors that are holding well, um, I think that's very important. Look, yes, the QQQ, look at the SMHs. They've really been struggling. Um, they've... Uh, they only had a what about a 61.8 percent uh, retracement from the high 283.07 in uh, July, slumping down to 200.49, and then the red. And today, the nine period moving average for the first time in about two weeks went negative. So I think it's very selective, and that's how I'm trying to treat the market. I don't mind raising cash because I think there are a lot of really good issues that we symbols that we haven't got in that I'd like to get in on a pullback. Yeah, well, if you look at the SMHs, I mean, we're down 17. The SMHs are only seven points away from the highs of the lows. <laughs> so that's pretty intense. Yes, and it's got this pattern that I call the dreaded H. And I suspect that if the 200-period uh, moving average of 218 is taken out, we will test that 200 level. Yeah. So, folks, come on to our web website. It's really easy to get Basil's newsletter. So TFNN, newsletter's at the top. It's right on the uh, left-hand side. Miles, you have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow. Thank you, Tom. You too. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. <laughs> 